Welcome to lesson 53 of your distance learning for geology of basic science with Kenneth Yosimbom. During our lesson 52, which was focused on revision and integration activity 2, we were not able to correct the assignment we had for lesson 51. So we are going to proceed to correct the assignment that we preserved or that we were given during lesson 51. The assignment required that we should state the geological map below and deduce or study the geological map below and deduce with reasons three essential characteristics shown and three essential characteristics absent. Remember that our lesson 51 was focused on the characteristics of a geological map. Now this is the map we're supposed to work on and then to deduce the essential features and the present and the essential features absent. Of course, the three key essential features there that are present you have the scale of the map and then we have SS that is sandstones which indicates a rock bodies then we also have I which indicates intrusions so those are the common essential features and therefore the three main characteristics shown involve the scale the rock bodies and the structures now this, the essential characteristics that are not shown on the map we include the fact that this map lacks a title, very important. Also, the fact that there is no line of section. We cannot see a line of section. And if there is no line of section, then there is, there is no cross section. So the three characteristics that are absent include the fact that there is no title, there is no line of section, and there is no cross section. Now we are still under the lesson. Map, uh, we are still under the topic map work, and uh, we saw types and categories of geological maps. We also saw characteristics of geological maps. Today we are going to concentrate to look at direction and orientation on maps. Our lesson fifty-three is titled Orientation and Direction on Maps 1. Orientation and Direction on Maps 1. So there is the second part of the lesson that will be focused on grid references. So today we're going to look at orientation and direction on maps. Now, under this lesson, we will look at objectives, prerequisites, real life situation, learning activities, which will help us to appropriate the lesson. We'll come up with some exercises that will help us to know if we have learned some information. And then we shall end our lesson with an assignment. Now, as we look through orientation and direction on maps 1, we will be able to locate and identify features on maps using 4, 8, and 16 cardinals. We shall also be able to draw, measure, and cite bearings of features using quadrant and the azimuth, the azimuth methods. We need knowledge on denudational geology, knowledge in petrology, knowledge in structural geology, as well as historical geology, in order to better assimilate our lesson. Now, take a look at these photos. We have photo uh, A, that is a beach. You have photo B, which is a fracture, C, which is a stratification, and D, which is an unconformity. A geologist 
collects photo, uh, photographic, uh, petrographic and structural data at different localities in the field. At each sampling point, he notes the coordinates, the nature of the locality, and takes a photo of the essential of the essential features. For example, photo A, B, and C, C and D that we have just seen. Now, which means or method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures of the different localities? That is the question we shall be answering. Now, is it possible to use histograms and cumulative frequency curves or use stereograms or use geological maps? Whichever is the method, we shall discover it in the course of our lesson. And we will come back to it towards the end of our lesson to know which of the method can relate the petrographic information and the structural information that was collected during field work. Now, take a look at this diagram. This diagram called figure one represents the diagram that will guide us to the lesson on direction and orientations on maps, which is the first part of this lesson. Now, observe and deduce striking elements of figure one. This is figure one. You look at this. You can see cardinal points of the, uh, of the compass. You see the north, the south, the east, the west. You can also see that the north is abbreviated capital N, and then the south, capital S, the east, capital E, and the west, capital W. Then you also have a compass. This is a compass without clinometer. But uh, this is a field, this is a field uh, uh, instrument. On paper, we are going to be using protractors. Now, the striking features of that figure one. You have the north, east, south, and west, which, den uh, which are denoted as N, S, E, and W. We also have uh, uh, a form cardinal points or the four cardinal points, and we have a compass. Now, a card the cardinal points and the compass rows suggest and give us a guide for orientation and directions on maps. Therefore, cardinal directions on maps, what are they? They are directions that, uh, uh, they are directions of the north, the east, the south, and the west. Not should be taken that in cardinal direction, the east and the west are in the right angle to the north and the south. Also, that the east is the clockwise direction of rotation, while the west is the anti-clockwise direction. Now, we have different types of nodes. We have the true node, which is the north according to the Earth's axis. We have the grid north, which is the direction northwards along the grid lines. We have the magnetic north, which is the north end of a compass needle, which points in response to the Earth's magnetic field. That is why when you get an iron-rich material, it is possible to attract to a bar magnet because of that magnetic node which is controlled by the core of the earth because that is where iron rich materials are produced and it drives the earth magnetic field now these are the different types of nodes represented this is the magnetic node this is the true node and this is the great node now the question is which type of node do we use for orientation and direction? Obviously, we use the true knot. The true knot is the reference point for other directions. You can orientate yourself. For example, where I'm standing, 
My front is my north, and my back is my south. My right is my east, and my left is my west. If I orient myself, and I'm facing this direction, then where used to be front, now is right, and it is east. And where used to be west is now front, and it is north. That is the way the true north assists in orienting as well as giving directions when we are working on the map. Then the top of the map is the true north direction of that map. So it helps you to know the reading position. And it helps you also to know how to position paper in order to present information. The right edge of the map is the east direction. Those are essential elements that we need to know. We proceed to look at the different cardinals. Remember that one of our objectives was that we will be able to locate and give direction of features on the map using the four, the eight, and the 16 cardinals. Now, we are going to represent them diagrammatically. Remember that the true north is always indicated with this arrow. Don't miss it out. We say that the north is represented with what? Capital N. So, that is our north. Capital N. And then, opposite the north, we have the south. And to the right of the north, we have the east. And then opposite the, opposite the east, we have the west. That is the four cardinal, the four cardinal points. Now, from the four cardinal point, we move to the eight cardinal point direction. So we redraw the four cardinal. Remember the position of the north. Then the south, the east, and the west. From the four cardinal, we repartition it in order to have the eighth cardinal. So, note should be taken that information is read from the north to the east, from the north to the west, and from the south to the east, and south to the west, not the reverse. So, that's way, Halfway between the north and the east will be called northeast. Then, halfway between the south and the east will be called southeast. Then, halfway between the south and the west will be called southwest. Halfway between the north and the west will be called northwest. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight will give us the eight cardinal point direction. Now, to move to the 16 cardinal, we have to come again, draw our 4 cardinal, the 8 cardinal, and subdivide it by 2. It will give us the 16 cardinal. So we have this. This is the 4 cardinal. Always remember the direction of the north. This is the north, the south, the east, and the west. Then, we subdivide it. We have the northeast, the southeast, the southwest, and the northwest. Then from the eighth cardinal, we can now redraw the 16 by, re by subdividing. This way, you take note, this way, and this way. So, we now have the, our 16 cardinal. Remember that we always move from the north and also from the south. So, from the north, we are at north, but we are moving towards northeast. So, this direction is north, northeast. We are already at the east, but we are coming from the northeast. So, this direction is east, northeast. Then, here we are still at the east. But we are coming from southeast, so it is east, south, east. Then, here we are already towards the south, so this will be south, southeast, 
And then here we are still at the south, but moving towards the west, so it is south, south, west. And then we are already towards the west, coming from the southwest, so it is uh, west, south, west. And then here we are still at the west, but coming from the northwest, so it is west, north, west. And then here we are at the north, and from the north towards the northwest, so it is north, north, west. North, northwest. So that is the 16 cardinal as represented. Very important. Without which it is difficult to find futures nor locate ourselves when we have a map. So that guides us to talk on bearing. Bearing is the compass direction from one point to another on the map. So with bearing, you must have two points. One is called the center point, and the other one is the reference point. Now, for bearing, the center point must always be the reference under which or the datum point under which the other points are read. For example, if A is the center point, then B can be read based on A. They are designated by the quadrant and the azimuth methods. So, bearings are quoted using the quadrant and the azimuth methods. Now, we are going to look at examples and we shall go back to relate compass directions and bearings. Now, we begin with the four cardinal. At the four cardinal, this angle is 90 degrees. And remember that we always read information from the north or from the south. So this is 90 degrees. Therefore, the north at the beginning point is 0 degrees. If this angle is 90 degrees, then the east should be 90 degrees. Should have the bearing 90 degrees. And then the south should be having the bearing 90 degrees plus 90 degrees. That is 180 degrees. Then the west should be having a bearing 90 degrees, 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, that is 270 degrees. Then the end point, which is at the north, should be at 360 degrees. So the beginning point is 0 degrees, the end point is 360 degrees. Therefore, the bearing or the angle for the four cardinals is always 90 degrees. Then for the eight cardinals, remember that the north for the four cardinals uh, it was zero degrees and the east is 90 degrees. So if you divide the north and the east by two, you have the northeast, meaning that 90 divided by two will give us 45. And so this angle is 45 degrees. Remember that the bearing from the north at the beginning is always zero. And uh, if this angle is 45 degrees, then the bearing of northeast is 45 degrees. And the bearing of the east, as we already established, is 90 degrees. Then the bearing of the southeast now will be 45 degrees plus 45 degrees plus 45 degrees. This will give us 135 degrees. Then the bearing of the south, as we know, for the eight quadrant will be 45 degrees plus 45 degrees plus 45 degrees plus 45 degrees, that is 180 degrees. And then for the southeast, you just get 180 degrees plus 45 degrees. It will give us 225 degrees. Then for the west, we already know that it is 270. That is summing 45 degrees, 45 degrees up to this level will give us 200, uh, 270. Then for northwest, it will be 75, uh, 270 plus 45 degrees. That will give us 315 degrees. Then the end point will be 300. 15 degrees plus 45 degrees, which will give us 360 degrees. That is how it is established for the eight cardinals.
Then for the 16 cardinals, we already know the north, the east, the south, and the west. We will know the northeast and the southeast. So the north, northeast, remember that this is always zero degrees at the beginning. The north, northeast is a subdivision of the northeast. And the northeast is 45 degrees. It means that this angle is 22.5 degrees. Because if you divide 45 uh, uh, degrees by 2, it will give you 22.5 degrees. So the bearing of north, northeast will be 22.5 degrees. Then for east, south, uh, for east, northeast, it will be 45 degrees plus this angle, 22.5 degrees, which will give us 67.5 degrees. We take another case, the east, south, east, so it will be 90 degrees, which is the east, plus 22.5 degrees, which will give us 112.5 degrees. So that is it for the bearings. That is how to develop for the different uh, cardinals, B8 the 4, which is uh, which an angle is 90, the 8, where an angle is 45 degrees, and uh, the 16, where an angle is 22.5 degrees. That is how the whole bearing looks like in the 16 cardinals, with both for 8 inclusive. Now, the quadrant method. For the quadrant method, we say that to quote the bearing, it must range only between 0 to 90 degrees. Remember that here we are moving from north to east and then from south to east. So the value ranges only between 0 to 90 degrees. As we can see in our diagram, from the north to the west, you look at this arrow, it's 90 degrees. Then the east too is also 90 degrees. Then the south is zero degrees and the north is zero degrees. Example, we will, we will now quote the bearing as well as the direction of X. If you look at X, X is at northwest. So the bearing at northwest, meaning that this angle will be 45 degrees. So the quadrant method will entail that we turn 45 degrees to the northwest. Then we will meet the point X. Therefore, the bearing line midway through the northwest quadrant of the compass rules is read as not, not 45 degrees west. From the north, you move 45 degrees to the west, you will have the point. Then for the azimuth method, the azimuth method is quoted or values are, uh, angles are quoted or bearings are quoted between 0 degrees to 360 degrees. That is a journey from the north clockwise back to the north. You begin at 0 degrees and you come back at 0 degrees. That is uh, to 360 degrees. That is here we have 0. Then you begin the journey through the east at 90 degrees, through the south at 180 degrees. And then to the west at 270 degrees and back to the north. That is the end point, which should be 360 degrees. That is why the value range must be between 0 to 360 degrees. Now, example, deduce the direction and use the azimuth method to read the bearing of point X. You realize that our point X again is in between the north and the west. So... That is how the reading goes. You take your arrow, you begin from zero in the north, and you turn it clockwise till you reach that point. You would have been at 315 degrees. So the bearing is read as bearing line midway through the northwest quadrant of the compass rose is read as 315 degrees. Or better still, bearing line through, from the north, through the east, through the south, and through the west, up to northwest, at uh, red as 315 degrees. Note, the quadrant method must always carry the bearing in three digits, excluding the decimal places. 
Now, recall that cardinal directions are directions of the north, the east, the south, and the west. In that, the east and the west are right angles to the north and the south. East is the clockwise direction of rotation, and that the west is the anti-clockwise direction. The true north is the reference point for other positions, directions, while the top of the map is the true north direction. The four, eight, and sixteen cardinal points give the orientation and direction on maps. While bearing is the compass direction from one point to another on the map. The bearing is designated by the azimuth method from zero to 360 degrees and the quadrant from 0 to 90 degrees methods. Now, exercises. Now, we will resolve our problem situation. Which means or method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures of the different localities? From our lesson, we know that the method used is for geological maps. Then, the next question is on map 7. Now, from map 7, state the directions of points B, C, and D from A, and then you draw and measure the following bearings using a protractor. Now, the first case, if we look at our diagram, the first case is from A to B. That is the direction northeast. So B is at northeast of A. Then C, down this way, is at east, uh, southeast or south southeast to A. Then D, which is represented with yellow line, is at the east southeast of A. So that is the solution of the problem. Now, bearing uh, measurement. If you look at A, that is the red blink, you will realize that A is at the northeast. Uh, uh, B is at the northeast of A, which means that it is not 45 degrees east for the quadrant method and 0, 0.45 degrees for the azimuth method. Remember that we said for the azimuth method, there must be three digits, excluding the decimal point. Then, for B, that is the blue blink, you will realize that uh, B is uh, at the east, the south, southeast, and there you find that an angle is given, 30 degrees here. Yeah? So, B is at south, 30 degrees east for the quadrant method, and then 150 degrees for the azimuth method, meaning that you just take 180 minus 30, you will, you will be at the point. Then, the uh, yellow blink is the bearing of uh, C from, uh, of B from C. This is where we have uh, uh, B, and this is C. So it is directly at the north of C. That is why for the quadrant method is zero degrees, and for the azimuth method two is zero degrees. Now, as assignment, we are going to observe the same map seven, and while we work on map seven, we will state the directions of the points A, B, C from the point D. Then we will draw and measure the following bearings using a protractor, that is A from D, B from D, and C from D. Then we will state the directions and bearings of the following uh, places found on that map. You have the San uh, Benito, and then we have the elevated ditch, we have the Missouri Pacific, and then we have the rich track OAO. That way, if you read geology for advanced level, the fundamentals of geology and principles of geology, they will assist you to appropriate the lesson and well, as well as guide you in doing your assignment. This way, we have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on orientation and direction on maps 2.
where we will focus on grid references. See you in our next lesson.